What up, people? What up, what up, what up? It's me, L Teddy 27 Angry Teacher Chronicles. And this is my review for Greenleaf Season 4, Episode 4. Shots out to my quad club, my number 4 on my line. Anyway, um, so let's get right down to it, y'all. Um, so we start off with Grace who's meeting up with Bob Whitmore. And y'all, I'm over here drinking, and I'm not drinking a drink drink, but drinking some Kool-Aid. I ain't even got no metal straw, y'all. How am I gonna do this review without a metal straw? Y'all know me. Mm. We're gonna struggle through it, y'all. And I could easily go get it from right there. Anyway, Bob Whitmore is meeting with Grace. And he wants her to meet with this other church so that she can convince the pastor of this white church who's struggling in Memphis or whatever. Is it Memphis or is it Nashville? Somewhere in Tennessee. Um, um, so he can, she can convince them to merge with Calvary. And it's a white church and Calvary is a black church. So I immediately was like, ooh, how is that going to work? But whatever. So then... When Bob leaves Grace's office, Phil kind of sees Bob leave Grace's office, and he's all in sorts because he kind of asks Bob, hey, is there anything I can help you with? Da, 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 da. Nah, I'm good. I got this. I already met with Grace. Grace going to do what I need her to do. And so Phil is all in his, in his feelings because he's feeling like he's losing his hold on his status with Bob or whatnot. And, um... So we already know that's going to go left. That's going to go, you know, not the right places. So then next we see Grace at this apartment that she apparently has gotten for AJ, her son. And so apparently AJ is in town, but he's not supposed to let anybody know he's there and not supposed to let anybody know who he is. He's supposed to be this secret who's right there in town. I don't know how you keep him a secret, but then he's still in town. And I don't, I mean... I'm trying to connect the dots to, okay, you that fast found him an um, apartment in Tennessee, but couldn't find him an apartment in Arizona. Whatever. Anyway. um, So then we see Jacob and Carissa. They're meeting with some guy about closing on a deal to sell the land. Carissa comments on the guy's um cufflinks because she says those are really nice cufflinks and she says uh because she I, it's almost like she wanted to buy jacob some cufflinks like those mm. some good kool-aid y'all but and she just pay attention to the fact that she noticed how nice the cufflinks were and she was like she was saying jacob you know i should get you some of those anyway um, Jacob and May, not Jacob, James and May are at the house. They're talking about James being invited to go off to Atlanta to go speak at this church, um, at another church. And May is like, no, we need all hands on deck. You can't leave. Everybody needs to be here to save the church. This, that, and the third. Y'all know May is, May is just overly dramatic about everything. Every she's such an alarmist. Uh, she, I mean, just such an alarmist. Everything is threat level red. Everything is DevCon five. May get your life in order. I mean, she reminds me of my mom because my mom is that everything. The world is always crumbling down around us, and you get there, you be like, "This is what you called me for, mom? Really? Whatever." Um. Anyway. Grace interrupts what they got going on talking and tells them about this meeting that Bob wants her to have with this pastor, this white church, and um, and about bringing them into the fold and merging them into Calvary. So then I told y'all, so the next thing we see is I told y'all Phil was going to be all in his feelings. I told y'all Phil was going to be with the bullshit and the fuckery. So Phil... Charity is over there trying to come to a good place with this white ass song that she got to sing 
at church that was made by um Bob's daughter. She over there at the piano trying to work it out, trying to get through it. Phil shows up in her office and Phil is like, listen, I need something on Grace now. I need you to find me something nice and big on Grace. So basically, he's telling her, listen, you need to do this now. He's trying to get something on Grace to make Grace um, not be as, to, to make Grace's status with Bob lessen, I guess I should say. Next, we see James and May um, talking to Grace Steele. They convince Grace that it's not a good idea for the white church to merge with Calvary, okay? Grace at home, walk after, they, after she meet with her mom and dad, and she's at home. Next thing you know, who walks through her room door? Sophia. Now, let me tell y'all something. I'm not here for Sophia. I haven't been here for Sophia for a long time, okay? Sophia is way out of control, way out of pocket, and Grace is over here just, just allowing the bullshit and the fuck shit and fuckery. And Grace is just allowing Sophia just to do whatever. And I'm so not here for Sophia. I mean, the way she is carrying on, like, girl... Just a mess. Just a damn mess. I mean, she claimed her and AJ been talking. And AJ done convinced her to come... Um, to Memphis to visit him so they can get um, acquainted with each other so forth and so on and like I said I loathe seeing her on camera anymore I, I really anytime she comes on camera at this point I all I mean it gives me a bad feeling in the pit of my stomach I literally don't want to see her on camera anymore um, can we get her off I know that came out harsh but can we have some accident happen to her character? Because I just loathe seeing her character. Uh, then we see May with Carissa. May over there printing out um, a copy of her old sermon that she did at the last day with Lady May. Carissa came there, I guess, to print out documents for selling of the land or whatever. And May tells her, listen, she equates the selling of the land to Eve taking the apple. Okay. Basically telling her, I mean, just because you can sell the land doesn't mean that you should. We'll see how that plays out. Sophia, um, I met, I forgot to say that Sophia had already told when she came, she told her mom, I'm not going to tell anybody. I'm going to keep your secret. You don't got to worry about it. Um, and her mom tries to talk to her. And she says, no, I'm not even staying in the house because I don't want to deal with grandma. I don't want nobody to know I'm here. I'm going to be in and out just to see my brother and take it on back to Hampton. So she said, I'll be staying out back with um, Zora in the cabin. So she goes over there to see Zora. Zora is like, girl, I don't see it for you, girl, because you told me you was going to stay. And then I look up and you up and done left and went on Hampton. So Sophia was like, oh, no, nah, it wasn't like that. Me and my mom, we got some issues going on, this, that, and the third. And you could already see Zora already see through the bullshit. Zora was like, mm -hmm, honey. And I think Zora gave her this litmus test. See, Zora says, well, you know, I forgot what she told her she wanted to do. And I that she wanted um, Sophia to help her with. We'll get back to that. Phil, next we see Phil um, at his laptop writing sermons for Bob. Bob, um, I mean, Phil basically is Bob's lackey and do boy. Bob don't do not. I mean, Bob makes Phil do all of his grunt work. Phil doesn't see it yet that he's never going to get to that place he's trying to get to with Bob because Bob does not respect him and Bob doesn't see him as a leader. Otherwise, he would have already been there. Sophia then goes and meets with AJ at his house. Now... He tells Sophia that she's just like her mom. And you see Sophia doing things out of her character just to um, make him believe that she's going to be there for him in a way that her mom wouldn't be there for him. And so that's why you see her drinking. She don't drink. She might have took half a sip and now she 
it done knocked her down and knocked her out. She stayed over his house. She done, she lying to people, this, that, and the third. So she's doing anything she can to, uh, to make this relationship, well, I mean, this brother-sister relationship between her and AJ real because she's losing the relationship between her and her mom. So this is her way to kind of make up for that or find a replacement for that relationship. But you just can't. You can't. So Grace meets with um, the white pastor. The white pastor lets Grace know, listen, this wasn't my doing. Bob kept pushing me to do it. I tried to go merge with some white churches. And he made no bones about no you need to go with Calvary. So that lets you know he got plans for Calvary. Carissa then meets with Phil about um, the school. Because she had already had a meeting with Phil about the school. And perhaps how Harmony and Hope could help. I guess give money to the school or something like that. While talking to Phil. She notices Phil's cufflinks. And she says. Where did you get those cufflinks? And she says. Bob, and I'm sorry. And he says. Bob gave them to me, and she says, well, where did you Bob get them from? He said, oh, they're custom made, meaning you can't buy them. If you, somebody has them, Bob got them for him. And so those were the same couplings that the guy who she's selling the land to um, had on. Save that. Charity then, um, we see her getting the lunch line or whatever line they was in with Corinne, trying to get info out of Corinne. Corinne is not here for her, but Corinne does let leak that Noah was in town. I think she kind of already knew Noah was in town, or did she? I don't know, but anyway, uh, Corinne did kind of let leak that Noah was in town. Uh, but then she said, I'm not giving you no information. Sophia then comes back to Zora's house after staying the night at her brother's house. And Zora's like, girl, what? Girl, whatever it was they were supposed to do, Zora had already signed. They was cutting out some stuff, decorating. I don't know what they was doing, child. But anyway, Zora, the harlot and whore, Zora. Um, she's upset. She's like, wait a minute. First of all, you told me that you was in town to um, you was gonna be with um, what's the boy name? The little cute little boy. Who she was boyfriend, I mean, who she was with. You was going to be with him. She was like, I call him. He said he didn't even know you was in town. So you been lying to me. And you stank. You ain't paid. You got on the same call. Girl, who you out here whoring with? Because a whore knows a whore. Okay? A whore knows a whore. And we all know that. Um, it's always a whore and a harlot. Anyway, so... Zora is really not seeing it for Sophia. Um, sit, um now. Because she's like, who are you here for? Child. Child. Zora mad. Because Sophia, because she thinks Sophia is getting her a nice piece of dick. And she ain't getting no dick from nobody. Child, she got his chicks offering up the cooch to her. Child, girl, boom. Charity then calls... Messy ass charity. Can we do so? Oh, wait, no. Before then, May, May meets up with Bob for lunch. And May lets Bob know listen, you trying to merge us here with this white church. You're trying to sabotage us. What is this all about? Because black churches and white churches don't merge like that. She kind of plants the seeds, though. For the ouster of grace. I guess so as to allow her. To go up in that. Spot as pastor. Girl may you're reaching. If you think that's going to happen. Then we see Charity sitting at her desk. She calls Noah. And leaves a message. On his answer machine. About him coming to the church. And not speaking with her. Purposely. So Noah's wife could hear the message because Noah's wife had no idea that he had come um, to Memphis. Ch Ch can we do something about charity? I'm so sick. Charity and Sophia. 
Can we do some about them too? So sick of them. So sick of them. Next, we see May still meeting with Bob. Um, apparently, like I told y'all, May had not sent Bob the speech. I mean, the uh, sermon that she gave at um, the the Labor Day the day with Lady May, so as to show Bob that hey, I got the chops to do this job. Hey, I am pastor material. May, the girls don't see it for you like that, honey. May then sees, um, is at home. She sees Sophia and is upset because she was like, wait a minute. What are you doing here? I didn't even know you was in town. Sophia is already packed and on her way out, back out to Hampton. Um, May is all upset, all of his sorts. Wait a minute. Grace um, comes in the room. Sophia's uh, and Grace, you know, they at it anyway. May is like, wait a minute. Wait a damn minute. I mean, May ain't say damn. But you know May is real dramatic. And we're like, why I know my grandchild was here, this, that, and the third. Sophia goes over to Grace and whispers to her list. I ain't bringing my ass back here until everybody knows about AJ. Which is fine for me, y'all. Because I told y'all I do not want to see her on camera anymore, on screen anymore. I am not here for Sophia. So if you want to stay away, Sophia, please do me a favor and stay away and don't come back. Thank you, doll. Thank you, boo. Thank you, doll baby. Moving on. May then um, tells Grace that, listen, basically, we in the fight for the church, okay? All this carrying on that you got on, you need to keep your eyes on the prize, boo. You need to be focused on the sermon that you got tomorrow so as to deliver the message that we are not giving up Calvary without a fight. <coughs> Child. So then we're at the church. It's Sunday. They, they start off with the Hope and Harmony song, which is a damn mess. I mean, Charity still sound good. She's still singing, though. But, child, it's a mess. Just a mess. That whole song. Grace then gives this very poignant speech. Not speech, but sermon. All about Moses and his ability to unify the um, 12 tribes of Israel for this common goal. But while it started off sounding like something that Bob Whitmore could get behind, she inevitably was leading to the point where she said, listen, yeah, it's a great thing to unify the people. But when the people get united, they will always... Um, so, almost like saying they will always take down whatever it is that is oppressing them. They will always unite to take down a common enemy. And so she was telling the people to rise up and rise up and getting the people roused up and so forth for this fight that they're about to have. Bob Whitmore is not here for it. He sees right through the sermon and sees what Grace is doing. And he is up and set. After church, May and the Bishop James come up to um, Grace and tell her, you know, that was a great sermon. You did well. That was exactly what we needed. This, that, and the third. Phil walks up on them and says, listen, Bob needs to meet with you in my office, not your office, in mine. I was like, mm. Carissa then gets his phone call and finds out that it is Hope and Harmony that is putting the money up to give to this guy to buy the land across the street from Calvary. Okay. Now Carissa is faced with this decision. Does she go through with it? Because there is the date they're supposed to sign it later that after the uh, papers to close out on the land deal later that afternoon. So she's contemplating that. Back in Bob um, Phil's office, Bob meets with Grace. And he lets her know, baby, you work for me. And what I tell you to do, that is what you do. All this carrying on you had going on in this sermon today, baby, keep it up. You, your brother, and your sister, all y'all going to be out of here. And it's going to be your fault. S shut it down, honey. Shut it down. I mean, and he kept reiterating, it will be your fault. 
Anyway, moving on. Carissa and Jacob go to the um to the closing for this land. Jacob, Carissa never tells Jacob uh, that hope and harmony is behind this. Jacob goes ahead, goes ahead and signs that. Now, see what I want to know is how all of a sudden Jacob was so gung ho about saving the land, and now he backpedaled in the pussy popping, and now he flip flopping all of a sudden, and now he's all about selling the land. Some don't seem right about that. I don't know y'all. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about that. But anyway, um, Carissa is first apprehensive about signing, but then she goes ahead and signs. Cause um, Jacob is like, "Go ahead, baby, sign." She signed, and that was that. Finally, the last thing we see is Noah calls Grace. Noah says, "Listen." I got kicked out. He's at a bar. I got kicked out the house. Your sister called my house, left a message about me being at Calvary. Isabel heard it, and I ended up telling her about our child. And she got in her feelings because we can't have a child and kick me out. And I'm coming back to Memphis to meet my son and start to build a relationship with my son. And that is where it goes off. I mean, I felt like the episode started off really slow. It was a struggle to make it through the first 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes of the episode. But it kind of picked up at the end um, and got much better at the end. That was Greenleaf Season 4, Episode 4. Y'all know how we do. We'll be in, these co in this comment section. And we're going to aga, aga about what we thought. And what I saw versus what you saw. Y'all know I always forget something. So y'all get in the comment section and let me know what I forgot. That's all I got for y'all this week. Y'all, I'll be back next week. Greenleaf. Thank y'all for coming. Y'all drive safe.